me, that's the last application, and this is another, and every application has got to be taken on its own merits. So let's take this one on its own merits. I think it promotes development of this area, Chair, and I don't know if anyone else wants to comment on that. Okay, um, Pat, may I take that? Yeah, I think so. I think that continues to make a fair point. We're, we're constantly told to consider each application on its merits, and, and we, we should do so. I think the previous application, a lot of members were on a site visit for that uh, particular application, so they'll, they'll remember uh, the area. But for those who aren't, you know, I mean, there was, there was clear grounds for refusal there. There was a clear breach of the rules of the conservation area. And, uh, you know, it's welcome that the new application has kind of overcome that. But that doesn't change the fact that everything that uh, the petitioners have pointed out is entirely valid. Um, so we're dealing with, if you look on the map, the woodlands and Lower Grove. This is a one-way system. It's a one-way system because the roads are very narrow. It is very difficult for uh, emergency vehicles, etc., to, to access uh, properties along there. Uh, I can also confirm that you know the landlord of this property also approached me about the drug dealing and the antisocial behaviour. So those comments are entirely valid as well. Uh, I think you know what um, again, if people who know the area, you know the woodlands. There, there are terrific properties down there. A lot of them are larger. Some of them listed properties, which are very amenable to uh, development as apartments, and, 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 and most of them have, in fact, all of them have, I believe been developed in that way, and that's fine because that's that's an entirely suitable form of development. Uh, on the other side of the woodlands you have traditional family properties, and I think what residents are quite rightly aggrieved about is that these just get chipped away over time and they get converted into flats, and that does change the character of the area. Uh, so you can kind of, I think what we need, we really need a policy about that kind of issue, particularly in conservation areas, because you could then argue about these kind of developments Whereas if you've got a single application that just converts another property into apartments, it's, um, it becomes increasingly difficult. Um, so, uh, yeah, they, they, they would be my main comments on, on the application. Thank you, uh, Seems that the capacity is 
it is going to be achieved, um, then that will, will have an impact clearly on the character of the conservation area because they'd be crying at home one uh, to return to park and, and could actually be just be encouraging the source of car park in the competitions I've, um, I've, I've presented, which, which is it, for the most part as far as I can tell from the first one, uh, illegal. Okay, anybody else before I go to this? Okay, please. I mean, in my way, it's, I mean, to me, I think flats and that, it does encourage a transient population, which is not what a conservation area needs. Uh, I, mean, I mean, overdevelopment would be my main, and, and I'll, if anyone's going to second it. Affecting the conservation area. And affecting the conservation area. Overdevelopment, which will affect the conservation area. And has anybody else got anything else they'd like to chip in? Sure. Uh, look, I'd like to stick up for people who live in flats. Um, I do, I live in flats. Excuse me. I live in flats. Yeah, I know, exactly. And you, you know, people often convert houses into flats that are up for sale at a very valuable price. We can't stigmatise people who live in flats as transients or possible drug dealers or whatever. That's not the right, right words, and I, I'm not going to sit by that. Um, Overdevelopment it will just be that kind of in the conservation area. If I've got a second there. Well, I, I, I assume we're asking advice at this point. Are you asking options for advice? I'm looking very. I'll second it. David, are we really need I'm just. We need sorry. I'm just anxious that we use the term overdevelopment. If you look at our UDP policy, um, overdevelopment is, 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 is a difficult one to actually argue, so I'm just, just trying to think. Come on. Well, you say the scale of that. Scale. 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 Does not does not HS12 require the building to be able to take the development? I don't know if you that. Um, the concern that Councillor Hudson has uh, put forward was, was that, that it appeared that the one of the flats <coughs> in her opinion, which I think other councillors are, are agreeing, is that the building is unable to take the proposal. I, I think I might have said that. If I've known them showing me this much fun, it won't be found and I can look at HS12. Um, but but, but there is, it took, for it to comply with HS12, it needs to, it, the, the building needs to be able to take the development that is being proposed. Uh, but I can't remember the phone. So they, I think it's three. I, I think it's three. I think we're also keen uh, to look at the reasons for the fusion reflect the concern that's being expressed about the damage to the character of the flat that the HS12 will cause. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
rules and uh, not okay. okay. Can, can I can I just say um, if we can ask you uh, Denise that to move it for refusal uh, based on um, we're staying here for its overdevelopment and it comes to CH2 or we the conservation area. What well, development effect in the conservation area? Is that what we're saying? Yeah. And the distance, separation distance is in mind. Well, they're not right. Both right. 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 we're making this up as we go on. Yeah, it's all yeah. professional yeah. and it's not, not the way any part of the should should deal with it. I know we're no, no in a situation here. Yeah. It, it's clearly the difference with this four parts is that it is set within a conservation area. So I would suggest any reasons for refusal reflect on the, the intensification of the use, which would be of detriment to the conservation area. If someone can use those sort of ways, it may help pass the board. Which is what I thought I just said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, um, did, Paul, did you want to say something? No, no, that's okay. fine. Okay, so uh, have you managed to capture those words? Okay, do, would you repeat them back so members are clear on what they're voting on, please? The proposed conversion of the property to four residential units is considered to be an over intensification of use um, and thereby detrimental to the character of the conservation area and contrary to UDP policy CH2. Okay, sounds great then. <laughs> okay, so do we have a do we have a second please? Second there. Half second there. All those in favour of refuse on this application. Okay. Those against. Okay, well the refusal is carried. So that application has been refused. For those of you who do want to leave now, follow me now, then please do, please do so. Okay, so as people are leaving, if we can get ourselves ready for agenda item 10, please put them in the chair. Page 73 to 78 of your Given that it is in a fairly sustainable location and that we express our problem standards as a maximum. 
Excellent. Would you like to this from your reason for refusing? And so that's the changes that have been made for the extensions, the applications are recommended for approval. And there is a call for petition. Okay, I suppose you have to call for my petition for this with the applicants here. Sorry, the petition. If I could just ask you to uh, turn on your microphone, please, at the bottom of the bottom. Just state your name and address, and put the microphone as well as you can. Um, and then you have up to five minutes, and let me know if you've got all the My name is Jane Fiore. I live next door to this property, through the village lane. I've been asked to speak on my neighbour's behalf, so I'm going to come here because of the short notice. Um, we feel that the dwelling that is, at, that is directly behind at number 54, the front road west, will be, still be compromised with regards to its privacy. Um, and the, the side extension, the working unit next door does have windows on that side, so that will go closer to their windows. Um, and the separation distances, we dispute the, the size of those and we need to ask you to look into those. Um, it also states that there's gated access to flat two, which is the side of the property. Um, this is at the narrowest point of the church lane. It's right opposite the gates into what's called the Port Troy Library. Um, if gated access is going to be in use all day um, because obviously the other residents will be the access to their bins on a cycle rack um, it's going to be in use all day there are school children going down there there are cars in and out of the pub all day the gates of the pub are open from half past seven in the morning um, and we're just worried about obviously there's the school at the bottom of the road as well, we'll worry about, um, especially on bin day, if the bins are out. It's a very narrow pavement, um, children are going to be stepping into the road. Um, in regards to your recommended conditions, um, we're wondering how they get carried out and what safeguards will be put in place to ensure that. Um, that the measures that are adhered to in the future. Um, and although the application does have cycle storage, in reality, most people will have cars or visitors with cars. Parking is already very difficult for residents. And some residents fed up the road in have been parking on pavements, which is in um, Houses that have already been converted into flats. Um, it says on the application as well that the property is unoccupied. This is untrue. There are there is a family in there at the moment. Um, that's four people. They're going to find new housing, and we just feel that three flats, as opposed to a nice family home that is occupied. Um, they're, they're putting their profits really above people. Okay, thank you very much. Is the applicant or agent here? Is there a ward counselling? Yeah, we're in the room. Okay, so thank you very much. Can I open the subsequent
Um, one of the things that uh, was mentioned was regarding separation distances, and I'd just like some clarification about whether separation distances are known for the reason. Uh, separation distances are exactly the same as they are now, because the upper story of the building is not the same as they are now. So the separation distances are the same as they are now. Okay, and just in terms of the conditions which um, are the same as they are now, Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, just, you, asked a, you asked a question about conditions. Yeah. Um, well, if they're not, these conditions are not adhered to, then this enforcement uh, would be carried out if they weren't um, adhered to. Okay. So, any other members want to speak on this? No. Please? Yeah, I mean, it's not dissimilar to other applications. Um, <coughs> The housing demand is for flats, smaller dwellings, and there's a whole number of conditions there. Basically, uh, that's where the market is, and that's where the market's going. And planning rules are moving towards allowing that to take place. There's all sorts of housing targets being bought on local authorities, national governments. I <coughs> have actually talked about building billions of new properties. And when we see the, the results of all those policies coming together, they look exactly like family home being made into three apartments um, and, and that's what the planning committee is facing and I know it, it, it's difficult to understand why it can't be a family home. It's obviously the demand is there for other for type of, of properties and part of the job of the planning committee is to enable uh, development to take place rather than, than stand in its way. A lot of people would argue it's uh, a better use of land if, more properties are on a smaller piece of land, that, that's uh, issues that are made. But it, there will be other targets in this area, they'll quite well know where the tolerance is and things like that. It can very, again, it can be very difficult to have sustainable reasons for refusal to, to object to very large property deals for three apartments. That's my contribution. Thanks, Steve. Pat? Um, Steve, yeah, thank you. I was just um, a little bit confused because the original application was refused on the grounds it didn't meet the what I call the interface distances here. Uh, I just wanted a bit of clarification as to why. I understand it's gone from two story to one story. But I just want clarification as to why the interface distances are now a mess, whereas previously they weren't. Could you just clarify that for me, please? Uh, because previously the two story extension projected from the rear of the building, so it was closer to the house in the back. When we look at interface distances, First floor windows, and that they're only looking at the scale of boundary treatment. So, any ground floor windows, we wouldn't take into that calculation. And this is a situation where you've got all the boundary treatment that screens it. So, it's purely the removal of the, the first floor windows as part of the extension. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Stuart? Uh, can I take one minute to get the first previous reason for refusal? Does that also relate to what I assume now is the removed flat? Uh, in terms of the substandard outlook today in the house with rooms. Does, does, that, does that mean that there's a moved flat at the house with rooms in the rear that was overlooking? And following on from that, um, the concern was expressed by the petitioner about uh, potential people looking from the first floor still into the back end. Uh, but I think I'm reading the report that there are windows there, I believe there are, uh, in terms of the layouts, we can be sure that there aren't habits of the rooms to the rear of the proposed flat on the first one. Yeah, I would move approval. Do we have a seconder? I 
Thank you, David. All those in favour of approval subject to the conditions listed. Those against? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. Um, we are going to uh, revert to order now. Um, so we're on agenda item 5, which is page 37 to 42. We have a presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. This application is departure from the Dunwich Plan and therefore we refer to members of the decision. The application site comprises an industrial unit within the cross business part, which is within an area designated for primary industrial use within rules in the development plan. UDP policy EMA implies that within such areas only uses falling within B1, B2, and B8 can be permitted. The proposed use of the Dance Academy is used by T1 and therefore is it to be a T town centre for use. The proposal does not therefore comply with three other policies. National planning policy framework um, also, is also concurs with this view and advises that if no suitable sites are available within the <coughs> centres, um, alternative locations on the edge of the centre or out of the centre may be considered. In addition, the framework also states that planning policy should avoid long term protection of sites allocated for employment use where there is no reasonable proposal for cycling. For, for, for that use. The applicants have submitted information to confirm that the site has been actively marketed continually for the last two years. In addition, a sequential test has also been undertaken based on the applicant's requirements for high ceilings and floor layout. The applications the applicant has provided a list of seven sites within the Bronzer area, but these have all been discounted due to the applicant's requirements. There are currently ten vacant industry units within close proximity to this site. The proposed use of this unit uh, would ensure that there is still a number of, of other industrial units available. It's therefore considered that having regard to the sequential test, the end of the year, and making marketing evidence provided, the proposed use of the building is unlikely to come by vitality and vitality of nearby residential uh, retail centres. The proposal is therefore recommended for approval subject to the attached condition. Okay, can I open this up to members? I th I just think it's it's a good use for vacant building has been vacant for the four years now. Thank you, Irene. Anybody else? Yes. Just just for the sake of arguments, <laughs> I was I was reading I said, the uh, regeneration framework. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, uh, this is our premier. This is our premier industrial size area it's designated for two framework. Well, the marks are all over the place. Um, and to be perfectly blunt, I, I think if it's a departure from that, then it, I, I'm not sure I'm prepared to, to, to accept the departure from use. It's an industrial use area, and, I, I think, and it's the main one in the market to the uh, to the well. I appreciate that there might be difficulties uh, at the moment. Um, I see the applicant has, has, has had interest in it, however, the interest. Uh, uh, That's the market speaking to me, to blow the wind, and then we can get the correct usages into the land use regulation <coughs> and give them the area. So, for that reason, it's a departure that I'm, I'm, I'm not prepared to support. Can I suggest to the Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm There is a condition um, given with uh, 10 or 50 cents for 10 years, short, um, and after those 10 years, if there is um, a viable opportunity properties go back into the industries, then that's there. And also the MPPF does say if there's no viable um, opportunity for um, industrial use to be to, to be within that unit, then we shouldn't hold back, it should go for, for alternative uses. I think uh, the other thing that I'd like to point out is that the, there are uh, 10 other vacant units within that area. Um, so I'll just highlight that to members as well. Please, I'll 
Matt, to approve subjective conditions listed, please raise your hands. Those in the study. Okay, we're now going to move on to agenda item 6, which is pages 43 to 50 in your packs. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application is for the former police station, which is on Chapman Street in Norman. It's in a key town centre, and it's a location where we can look at residential uses, provided we're happy that there is, you know, it doesn't affect the viability and the vitality of the, the key town centre, and that there are still some commercial uses at ground floor. So to that end, the proposal is for change of use and extension of the building. So a retail unit is proposed at the front, Thus, keeping a, a retail frontage on Chatham Street. Um, the ground floor of the building is to be, the range of the ground floor of the building is to be used as flats, and there are three flats proposed on the first floor. <coughs> this involves an extension at the back of the building on top of an existing single story extension. Um, as it's in a location where we can permit residential, if we're happy, it doesn't affect vitality in the centre. Um, there, there is off-street parking for bikes, there's no off-street parking for vehicles proposed, and there isn't amenity space for this development either. Um, but again, that's not dissimilar to other proposals in key town centres where you have fairly limited space. There is a parking within the area on the street and there are public car parks nearby. It is a very sustainable location in that sense. Um, so on that basis, we feel that the proposal for conversion to retail and to residential is acceptable and it is recommended for approval. Thank you. Is there a board council who would like to speak on this? <coughs> Just stay in there, please, in a minute. Thanks, Chair. Steve Williams, board council of the North West of Shore um, I have no formal objection to this planning application, but would like to bring a concern to the committee. Having lived in Malta for 59 years, I know the area quite well, and I'm always keen for any development and regeneration in the town. And I welcome applications such as this. My only concern is parking. The development is in a very busy one-way street in the heart of Morton. As the members who attended the site visit on Tuesday witness, the demand for street parking on this road is immense. The location has one of Morton's doctor's surgeries, which also now includes a minor injuries walking, which is open from 10 a.m. to 7 or 8 a.m. each weekday. Also, there is a post office. Post office sorting office and a very busy campus and opticians. So I would just ask that when you deliberate, you can fix, carefully consider the usual need of parking requirements for a development comprising of a retail unit and five residential units at this location. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Steve. Can I have any subsequent please? David? Yes, thanks, Chair. As uh, usual, this was a very interesting site visit. Like Steve, I have known this particular area and particular road for a long time, and it's always been characterised in the recent years with escalating congestion, confusion, and noise and disturbance. Um, I recognise totally that we need to improve the number of residential properties that are available for people to, to live in in the borough. And as has been said previously, a lot of those probably need to be flats because that is not an apartment of some sort, because that is what people need. But this particular development, I'm concerned about it because it's got a sorting office next to next your door, which is particularly busy at all times of the day, noisy with our ticks, heavy uh, vehicles backwards and forwards. The surgery is open a lot of the time, and I do not think that we could sustain an argument for turning it down because of parking, because as has been said, it is a town centre development, there's easy access to a lot of transport, uh, public transport, and there are a number of parking areas which are relatively free in close proximity. I like to park my car outside my house, but that clearly isn't a possibility when you're living in a location like this. So the, my concerns are lack of amenity within the building itself, total lack of amenity, adjacent to the property because there's no external space at all for anybody to do anything other than try and walk up and down those two yards that are on each side of the building itself. 
So I feel that it is not an appropriate solution to our need for residential development. And I'd like to move refusal for a reason in a moment, but only after other people have had an opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, okay, well, until then, the reason for refusal, I, I won't make my pay for mine. But um, the issue of parking has been mentioned again repeatedly. It's a town centre location. Um, an application which bears on my thoughts is the one in Port Village, close to me. Uh, for Tesco's 10 apartments, not one single apartment space uh, available. We put the object, we refused our parking grounds and got taken over basically the fact. So I think it's, if it is about parking, it is. I didn't go on the site with this, I'd be happy to hear from people. And the other application that's sticking in my mind is the Lair Street um, police station where they were crowding people into there, which we put refusal down and still still got turned over. So my idea is that I'd actually like it to remain as a police station, you know. That would be quite nice for a minute. But um, we've had a number of applications, and it's not political, but austerity is fighting the police forces better, much as anywhere else, and that's why the police stations are closing down, and that's why the police are trying to use their assets to get from their estate to get money in, back into police, and so it's a very, very vicious circle. But on terms of power grounds, if the apartments are self-contained, uh, not uh, what we've been referring to as bus houses, then I don't think we've got a way to stand on the room in terms of the user. Pass. Yeah, thanks, Charlotte. I'll end on the side of this. So I just want to point out something, really, um, that the original application, as I understand it, was for six apartments. Uh, but that's been amended to meet the council policy that in town centre locations we incorporate some retail space. Um, I, I just like members to be aware of that. I think it's something that we, we need to consider. We we're well aware, I'm sure, of all the pressures that are on town centres and the amount of vacant units there are in, in many places, including including the mall. Um, so I think there would have been... It's an argument to be made that you could have created more amenity space if you didn't have to fulfil that condition. Okay, anybody else? David, can I bring that to you? Yes, of course. Um, thank you. So I would like to move refusal for the following reasons, really based on the sort of, uh, how can I put it, the way that the residents are going to live in that particular area, which I don't think is an acceptable solution. Anyway, the reasons for refusal are as follows. The local planning authority considers the proposal to be unsatisfactory in that the plot size and shape would result in a form of development lacking adequate provision of private amenity space and outlook adjacent outlook, which the occupiers of the proposed development could reasonably expect to enjoy, and is therefore contrary to UDP plan policy HS13 and SPG note 13. So I'd like to move that chair. Thank you. So David has moved refusal. Do we have a seconder? Thank you, Paul. Okay, all those in favour of refusal? All those against refusal? Okay, that, that's a uh, refusal to put and lost. Okay. Uh, move approval, Chair. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, so students moved to need to second all those in favour of approval. Those against? That's lost. So that's that's been approved. Let's go apologize. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, okay, we're now moving to agenda item seven, which is pages fifty one to sixty in your pack. Thank you, Chair. This is a retrospective application to retain the telecommunications mast of the King Peter High Pole at the junction of Mellon Park and Holding Road on a small area of the West Village. Um, the mast recently had approval through the fire notification system, whereby we, we look at um, the, the appearance and the sighting. 
the, the matters that we consider. It was felt to be acceptable. The masters are a slim line mast. It's, it's um, finished all by the telegram panel, similar to a telegram panel. And it was felt at that point that this was acceptable. So that was approved. However, when they came to construct it, it transpires that there's a large water main underneath where the mast was actually approved to go. So they pulled it uh, one point three metres away from the road back into the grass verge. So essentially it's the same deployment, it's the same cabinet, it's the same mast, it's just a little further into the site. Uh, we feel the issues are the same. Um, the applicants have demonstrated that there are no suitable sites in the area where it could go. It's kind of in between a stretch of road in between two conservation areas. Um, and it's an area where the topography is quite varied, where there are lots of trees. So there are not many opportunities for it to go. In fact, the applicants have said this is the only place that it could go and achieve a coverage that they need to achieve. Um, the application is accompanied by the appropriate certification to the certification to say that it's safe and it's acceptable. Um, we feel that the appearance of it is a similar to the telegraph pole, bigger than the telegraph pole, and that it's taller, but it's similar dimensions, it's similar colouring. The cabinets are, are already on site and they're set at the back of the grass verge. They're not dissimilar to the existing telecom cabinets that are already there, and again, they kind of blend into the background. It, it is on the basis of the the fact that a single mass has already had approval, it is recommended for approval in the site. Okay, if we don't have a board council here, so I'm going to open it up to the committee. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments? Mm -hmm. no. just, uh, just very briefly, very briefly, as I mentioned, obviously it's in my ward, it has created consternation from some people because the writer has been saying it's not in the consternation area. Um, there have been all sorts of wild statements made regarding the fact that it would affect our long from the health perspective, which is about half a mile away down the road, which is slightly bizarre, to say the least. Plus the fact that some people in, in my ward don't seem to appreciate that uh, they want to put the mast in these locations to improve the quality of the service to the people in the use of property. So I can understand them thinking it does stick out like a sore thumb, but what we're really doing here is the objectors are trying to reverse all the objections that they raised previously, whereas as has been said by the officers, it's got to be moved if it's on top of the vital service that can't be moved itself. So there's very little change from what was previously um, proposed, uh, other than the fact the need to shift it because it was interfering with a major service. So uh, I don't like to have to approve it particularly, but I can understand why it's got to be done in the form it has. Okay. I'll second the leases. Okay, so the leases moved and these are seconded. All those in favour of approval just conditions listed. If we can now move to agenda item 11, which is pages 79 to 84, if uh, we have a presentation in the ready, please. Thank you, Chair. Persons of support is to request a member's agreement to bear in the word in three conditions on the Burnham and Biscuits scheme, um, originally approved by members of the Planning Committee in October uh, 2016. The application is a hybrid proposal which sought full planning permission for the access, wave bridge, um, and other infrastructure to the commercial and industrial side, and an outline planning application for 299 new houses. The applicants have advised it's necessary for the operation of facilities um, to enable these to continue um, and the, the, the required implementation of full element of planning permission. The proposed changes to the wording of these conditions will ensure that separate elements of this scheme can be undertaken in a structured manner. So for these reasons, members are requested to approve the amended wording as set out in this report. Okay, we don't have a board council to speak on this, um, so we'll open it up to committee.